Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Podcast Juice. My name is Michael Dean, and we are here with Switch the Style Up Episode 2. Of course, you're joined by my other co-host, Mr. Troy Gua. Sir, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for coming <laughs> in. To talk about this era. I see you have the red bandana already positioned yep, yep. strategically. I love it. I love it. And also, we have the beautiful Tanja. How are you? I'm doing well, Michael and Troy. Great to see you again. It's been yeah. a long time. I know. It's been, it's been a little minute. You know, we, we've lived a little bit between the last episode. But with that said, being that it was the first one, you guys have any call outs or just things uh, that stood out to you about this? Did you watch <laughs> yourself or did you read the comments? <laughs> any feedback? Tanja? You can go first, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did want to, I knew that there was something that I wanted to hit on that I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't write it down. And I really need to take that lesson from Prince and Scotty Baldwin. I always have a notebook oh, nearby. Okay. And I really should. And I know that. But yeah, there was something I, ah, I can't remember. And I think maybe someone even had mentioned something in the comments. Mm. But mm. sometimes you got to go to the comments and have your shields on shields yeah. Are yeah, but see, i just try to ignore that so <laughs> well and tanja anything for you um nothing i could think of i think we did a good job of covering everything and it seems like from the comments we had a lot of agreements and that's always a great thing i didn't see any battles going on in the comments mm -hmm. and um you know that tends to happen on social media right right well a little bit, oh, go ahead. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, well, with that said, today we're going to jump right in to Dirty Mind, we're gonna get into controversy, and uh, Troy said it before we started, but this is, and for a lot of people, this is the start of where the, you know, the, the Prince universe that we know it, kind of, you're really starting to see it start to take shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the interesting thing, I think, and we'll meet as we see when we do this uh, show, is how things come into shape, how we see imagery and looks and styles that become, you know, uh, the prototype uh, moving forward. And you can kind of trace a lot of it from what we're about to get into right now, I would, I would argue. So with that said, we're going to start talking about Dirty Mind. Of course, this Dirty Mind, the album, I got my notes here, it came out in October of 1980. It was October 8th, to be exact, 1980. Some of y'all wasn't born <laughs> Or thought about. <laughs> right. I turned 10 the next day. Yeah, some, some people, like, their parents hadn't even met or they just met. Some of y'all was babies. I was a baby at this time. I get, Well, I guess I was 9 or 10, I think. Yeah. 10 years old. You're, like, you're, you're 11. You're, almost, you're 10. 10, yeah. And I, I had no idea consciously who Prince was at 10. Um, I think it might have been months later that I was introduced to this album not knowing what Prince was but just that I knew like my cousins were playing it but I just didn't know who he looked like you know I didn't know anything about it mm -hmm. uh, discovering the album many years later actually after Purple Rain sort of the, 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 oh, wow. the between Purple hey. Rain and Around the World in the Day period yep. started backtracking so um, we did the same thing okay and um, I'm going to order so yeah. Really? So tell yeah. me about that. So you... She's an East Coast girl, man. No, it's okay. She got, she, go. got, she got all that stuff. <laughs> I got all of it. <laughs> well, let me... We're up in the corner. We're like... So, yeah. Uh, here we go. Dirty Mind. This is the cover. <laughs> Iconic picture. And I... My man, I, I'm skipping his name. Albert... Uh, what's his the photographer? Oh, photographer. Uh, Bolio. Bolio. Is that how you say it? Yeah, that's how you say it. So shout out to him because I know some of these pictures like, we're going to see come, come from him. And he, he has his own book. I have it right yeah. just out of arm's reach. I should have had it with me. If I'm you, looking right at it. Yeah, Alan, if you like that. early prints, that, that's the book to get. Like, I mean, he just he's there. Yeah, he is right along hel helping to like create this visual, mm -hmm. you know, it's that aesthetic, this world that Prince is beginning to build. And Alan Bolio is like super integral, I think, in that. Absolutely. The bed springs was his idea, you know. 
the bed. You know what I say? When I looked at that back in the day, I didn't even in my mind picture that that's what that was. I, I didn't until much later either. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, that's genius. But just think of how this photo was lit. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And to me, black and white is the hardest. It's the hardest photography to get right. It's, mm. it, I think with color, you can manipulate the colors a little more to make it really pop. But black mm. and white, you have to have a certain eye to make it really, really shine. Yeah. Would this you know what I'm realizing? Is it just me? I, I swear I never noticed this before, but they're in negative. They're oh. in the, mm. the bed springs are in negative. I see Am what you're I, saying. It kind of does look like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh. I never, I never noticed that. Before. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And and this being, excuse me, from the first two album covers coming to this, this is a black and white photo, mm -hmm. which I'm curious, is that just a stylistic thing? Uh, I think that means art. I think <laughs> I, I think that's more I'm an art, I mean, artiste. Statement if it's in black and white. Really, okay. I do. I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I don't want to go that way and um was when did like raging bull come out interesting that might have been in it i think it was around the 80s yeah i'm yeah. pretty sure he he was really into that movie too and yeah. just the style so you know just just jump right into the style yeah. i mean this is totally different i would say this is totally different in my opinion what you saw from the promotion of prince i, I would wonder if people who want to actually see him live would not necessarily be so shocked by seeing this sort of imagery versus what was on the earlier album covers and promotional shots. But this here is like, okay, this is different this is guy. Different. Yeah. This is a different, this hits different. <laughs> I mean, he got draws out speedo off the top. <laughs> if you didn't know the name, you would not know that's the same guy from album number two to album number three. You know, that's very true. His hair was different. His look was different. This was the, everything. This was the introduction of the trench. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about the whole video, all three, Sorry. I think three of them, him, Andre, and who else had on the trench? Dez. Dez. Yes. They all had on trenches. If you remember the photograph, they all had detail on one arm as well. Mm. And the detail, yep. And the detail varied on each trench. Yeah, they, you know, personalized it. And I think that was a big thing in like kind of the punk scene at the time. Mm -hmm. exactly. It was a way to, you know, exert your individuality. But before we get into that, I want to kind of go back to the sort of the nudity aspect of everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've, well, I've, thought about, I've thought about this a lot. This, and I, this doesn't fit with that time, but I just, it's just I just we're getting there though, <laughs> and it does, it really does. Um, so streaking was like a big thing in the seventies, mm. and it was a form of protest, and you know, it was a way, it was a kind of a, a sexual revolution protest, right? Mm. And I think that may have played a part in it. But then there's also this flashing aspect with the trench coat. Trench coat. Which yeah. is like, what, that what was in it? some kind of show or something, wasn't it? Somebody always did that. Like, ah. Yeah, probably. I mean, it was like a, it was sort of like a funny joke type. Maybe could have been on like laughing or something. Yeah, I remember this. It was this in the popular culture, and it was like a funny thing. Whereas like today, it's like sexual assault. It's a little different now. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's playing with this thing back then, which is really kind of it's more than edgy, you know. I had totally forgot about that. That was a thing. The guy with the trench coat, and he was yeah, and opening dude, up. Ah, you almost see Morris to jump ahead of remember Morris yeah. State sort of does that in Purple Rain. Right. <laughs> But yeah, the whole trench coat thing, I mean, with the whole trench coat back then, I will say it was a lot of um, shopping from surplus stores. Totally. And, um, and then the influence of the punk rock era. That was mm -hmm. when punk rock was the it thing. And I think he dove straight into that whole that whole look, that whole style, that whole aesthetic, that whole way of being. Um, 
just being in that punk rock era, like in DC, most people don't realize that, you know, punk rock was huge in Washington, DC. Um, wow. Bad Brains. Mm. Totally. Washington, DC. It was a connection of punk rock, and this has nothing to do with it, but go go. Like, those were things that went hand in hand during that time. But just seeing this, this is definitely completely influenced by punk rock culture. Yeah. And how different was. You know, in terms of Prince, I guess you would consider him an R&B act, for, you know, prior to this, right? If you just went by the first two records and then visually coming out with, you know, and showing these different influences that aren't like normally an R&B act would have, like it would come out like this, right? right. Totally, man. He was like, don't put me in this box. And yeah. Like, man, I get that. I'm mean, like, that is the biggest influence on me is like, don't put me in that box. I can do this, but I'm not that. So, I'm gonna take a we gotta take a quick break because we're getting some weird echo noise. I don't know if you guys hear that. Yeah. Uh, me? Let's see. Is somebody playing with their speakers? Nope. Let's see. Check, 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 check. Oh, there we go. That was me. It was you, Michael. <laughs> Is it how's that? Can you guys still hear me? Oh, wait, no, that wasn't me. Can you hear me? We can hear can you. Hear. I couldn't hear you. Check. We Somebody can hear say you Check. 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 One, two. All right. It's gone. One, two. It's gone. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. I can faintly hear it, but it's not as loud as it was. Let me Is see. it because I have my sound turned up too loud on my computer, you think? It, it might be. Um, there's a way you can go in. Are you using your computer mic or are you using a mic? I'm using a I think if you go mic. into your settings and you go to the audio, there's a thing that says echo cancellation. You want to make sure that that's yeah, checked. That's on. Okay. Let me check and see if mine is on. Mine says high definition camera. Um audio. And what did you say it's just saying auto? There's an echo cancellation. Yes, I have it checked. Oh, okay. Check, check. All right. Hello. Check, check. I don't hear it now. Siblings, siblings. All right. Can you hear me? All right. So, yeah, I hear you. Okay. All right. We'll get back one, two. Mike. I'll see that. <laughs> Action. Yeah. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that little technical difficulty. But we, as we back to the conversation, we're talking about uh, the dirty mind. And one thing I wanted to just jump in real quick here is I, I actually, I see it, but it's one of those things that my mind sort of erases from me. The red bandana. Yeah. Like that's an ob such an obvious thing he's got on. I never really picked up on that until we were I was we were preparing for this. I'm like, wow, he was wearing a red bandana and a lot of these promotional shots. Like mm -hmm. I don't know totally part of the era. era. <laughs> and I don't remember seeing it like I know, like here's where I think of it, like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard was the first time I remember seeing someone wearing that and like dudes at school would wear them around their legs but mm -hmm. this was before that like this was in 82 83 when like Def Leppard and MTV was like hot and that mm -hmm. stuff was happening so he predated that I don't know how was that around I don't know where the bandana thing came from yeah I, again it's easy to say punk rock and, and sort of rock rocker influences but you know the whole look that he has is in such a contrast in my opinion to what was like what you was wearing on the street mm -hmm. to some degree and being him being brave enough to be like you know what bucket i'm coming out this is the look you know this yeah. is what's popping it's not this is just the look like yo this is that next you know this is next shit i'm wearing next and that was one thing about prince he was on always on next shit. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm just putting no, this is what y'all gonna want to get up on. Y'all ain't yeah. got this, you know. It was a lot of that. You ain't got this look. Uh, oh, oh, this is what I was thinking about before we took a break. So the trench coat and um superfly. Superfly. I think, I think maybe this is the poor man's version of that leather trench, you know. That was his way, that was how much he could that's what he could afford. They could all afford, let's go get these trench coats but michael i wanted to ask, also ask you this do you remember you've talked to andre 
about this. You, you've done podcasts with Andre Simone. And I do I remember that coming up at some point? The the them like going to a, a thrift store or something. It sounds vaguely familiar, yeah. but I, I honestly don't totally remember the details. But yeah, I mean, I know his sister was very involved, but there's not a whole lot of in, involvement in like just a trench coat and some bikini briefs. And but that like, was, but she was the one who really was styling them at that time, right? Yeah. So I mean, this was part of her 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 image of what she wanted to portray as a group. And I see she, mm -hmm. like everyone has their own individual look, but it, you can tell it's all influenced by the punk rock culture. Yeah. One thing I can remember from that interview, Michael, um, that was mentioned that goes back to DC um, was Andre had purchased these pants from a store in DC called right. Commander Salamander. And Troy knows about my infamous um, pin collection. Mm. And my pin collection Love came that. from Commander Salamander. So um, wow. it was a huge punk rock store in Georgetown in Washington, DC. And you know they catered to punk rock culture. They catered to rock culture um, as far hot as- Hot topic like, when oh. there was only one. <laughs> All right, early hot <laughs> topic. Right. You had right. to search cool shit out. You had to, yeah, yeah. you had to, but we had this available. one store and Prince always stayed in Georgetown whenever he was in DC. And whenever he was in DC and stayed in Georgetown, it was locked down. I remember, um, wow. you know, just the, the streets being locked down because he was going to get his hair done or, you know, something was happening of that sort just before crowd control. But wow. um, I clearly remember Andre talking about those clear pants from Commander Salamander, and I used to work a couple of doors down from there. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. And you brought up the buttons. That was another mm -hmm. thing. The, the, he's got the buttons in the picture. And oh, buttons, yeah. you remember, buttons was the big thing. Like you, Huge. You, you had to have your button game tight. Yeah. Really, the enamel pins, too, which is like totally had this huge <laughs> right. emergence. Yeah, That's but, what I meant. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That was and actually uh, one of my coworkers. He's he's our age. He still got the dope, uh, you know, buttons on his uh, backpack. And I'm like, man, it just reminds me of back in the days in, in school and stuff. Totally. But yeah, Prince had the. And of course, we're we haven't you know, we meant, haven't mentioned the Rude Boy, yes, uh, pin there. Can anybody speak to that? Like, Andre, you want this? Where that comes from? I don't. I don't know what was the origin of the Rude Boy pen. Um, yeah, it's it's about Rude Boy culture and like ska ska culture, music okay. culture, mm -hmm. and it's the blending of black and white, which I think is what really that's what Prince is about here. I don't think it has anything to do with the ska punk culture necessarily. I think he liked the idea of the blending of black mm -hmm. and white, and that was part of his myth building, right? Yeah, and this Part is the, and the first way the, time the we, we get looks. the myth. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the way the band looks, and there are all these characters. He's created these characters that are mm. supporting his character that he's building. And it's super interesting to look back on and think about <laughs> now, right? Like, there's so many levels to, like, yeah. to the just the fact that he's kind of a flasher. That like, I've never thought about that before, you know? And now it makes it, sense it, when you it say was 20 that. Years old, and it's like, wow, yeah. right. I never, yeah, because I never thought of it like that. But now that you say that, the whole flasher streaker thing, his look makes sense. Now I understand some context for. Okay, I, I see what he's playing off of. Yeah, like, and there was also you know. like this is in my bank somehow, and I don't know if it was. I read it in like Playboy letters or something as a little kid, <laughs> but there was like this fantasy in pop culture. I can't really nail down a specific reference, but just like the idea of your lover showing up at your door in a trench coat and nothing else, or you know, like that yeah. was a thing. Yeah. And see, you just touched on something that I think plays in this. I'm just going to deviate for a second. You mentioned being a kid reading Playboy <laughs> letters or Hustler and things. And, and you contrast it to today where, you know, you have instant access yeah. to ex very extreme porn. Uh -huh. But but um, but in comparison to what we had access to and everything being relative, us being able to sneak peeks and playboys and things like that and coming of age, this album really sort of plays into that 
in terms of what we had yeah. access to uh, technology. This album was like sneaking, listening to a Playboy. It was that same type of thing. Oh, did you hear the head song? Totally. The, the right. Sister, it was so like, whoa. And you, you can't play this out loud no. you know, if you're a kid. Right. Live my parents had but any you, you kind of kept it and snuck it and, and it was your friends. But th this whole his whole look, the whole presentation actually plays into that whole, you know, it's called dirty mind. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like okay, he's telling us basically what this is. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of and he's, what was in his mind, which yeah. was all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, he's not flirting, but he. This is the first sort of rebel prince, like where yeah. I'm. I'm. He's actually political in the sense where I'm talking about uh, staking my claim of who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's different than the other stuff. Uh, you know, dealing with the questions of being gay and, and that coming in, right. like acknowledging that out front. Like, no, nah, I'm not gay, but you know, what I'm saying if you are, that's cool. I'm right. trying to smash. You know, really, <laughs> putting yeah. all of that kind of stuff out there and then talk about not going to war i mean it was a, yeah it was the party original was not, you know it wasn't really a party song, song. it was <laughs> but then song. also you had to think about during this time right now he really broke down the barrier of what r&b was supposed mm -hmm. to look like mm -hmm. um just think about you, like you said uh, michael talking about his first two albums and how this deviated from those two looks I think he, he kind of gave old. them what they wanted. He yeah, gave but... orders what they thought that they were signing, and then he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll be right back." Yep. And, uh... Yeah. I, I wonder what it what an artist. You know, it's like everything is very heavy on uh, the the lane that an artist sort of represents. Mm -hmm. Like if he again, if he was an R and B artist and it was very strict, like no, you have to come out with the tuxedo. But it has to be nice and neat. And it's almost like, well, y'all still kind of want me on some tuxedo shit, but I'm going to wear it. With no pants. Wild. Yeah, well, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to have no pants. I'm going to be crazy. I'm gonna, you're going to still think I'm going to be this, but no, I'm coming out. And I, 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 my question was to say, I wonder would they even allow an R&B or a quote R&B artist to even put something else like this that is so different? Like if, if Chris, I mean, I probably would, but, Chris Brown, and I'm not comparing him to Chris, but I'm just saying. Oh, in terms of, not, let's not bring Chris if, Brown. If, if it's an <laughs> R&B artist, like if, sure. it was, if this was El DeBarge back then, right? Uh, sure. And he came oh, to, back then. And he came to Motown. It's like, I'm coming out on some wow shit. Be like, <laughs> like, that's not your image. But he just was allowed to do whatever the hell he wanted. And, and it was great because this, this album sort of sets the stage for the prince that we know. Mm -hmm. um, but just the boldness of coming out, like to me, I don't have the picture. But he had that green outfit, yeah, you know, with the, the tassels. The right. I mean, that's just so raw. And we didn't talked about his hair, but oh, you, yeah. you can see the hair styling first. I want to talk about the bit. underwear. I think there's a story, <laughs> and I don't know if this is accurate, but he went on stage without underwear, pants. This is like '79. Mm -hmm. and someone said look dude you gotta wear underwear on stage and he's like okay i'll wear underwear and the next time he came on stage he had no pants but he had underwear <laughs> that's for sure so i i'm wondering if that's where that came from like it okay. probably did because i can attest from being close in the front row of a lot of his concerts he never wore underwear <laughs> never <a> <laughs> Never. Let's see wild. what the comments deliver. On that. <laughs> there was just stuff flying. Oh, wow. That's a wild yeah. I just would, I, man. I wish I could just ask him, like, dude, where did you get the balls and just the the balls? <laughs> so just go go raw like person. that. And he know? was like bold. He's like, I got the shit. Yeah. I can flaunt it. And well, people are gonna insane. look right. at me and be like, "What the fuck?" He that he was gonna do anything to get the most attention possible at that time, yeah. you know. And to also, he was hungry. Limit. He also was a limit pusher. He pushed oh, yeah. as far as you could possibly go. 
totally and over the edge sometimes yep but yeah that's why we love him yeah (laughs) just just what a ah you're lucky that you got to see this stuff yeah just to see the whole transition of the disco culture he there was no there was no slight transition it went from that to this to straight punk amazing amazing yeah it is probably the biggest like shift in prince's career and Mm -hmm. it's the biggest you know divide between two Mm. sounds and I actually, when I first met Dwayne Tudal, I I approached him with that. I was like, "Please tell me you're going to write a book about 1979 to 1980 because I want to know what happened." And I, there's probably I don't know if there's what kind of records can be found or who can speak to it, but that is the biggest shift. It's where he becomes the the prince that yeah. I kind of grew up with. Yes, yeah. and shout out to Andre, Lord. Oh, absolutely. He was <laughs> such a huge influence on Frank. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, you know, I feel, yeah, you're right. I feel bad not having spoken about him. It, it, you got Andre, uh, Dr. Fink, yeah. rocking his doctor outfit. He's like, hey, mm-hmm. I, got, I got my look. <laughs> Y'all do what you know, want. I, he was going to be, he was going to be a... Uh, jailbird but rick james right. is <laughs> but you know good. what this this collection of artists right here i wish we would have had them a little longer me too this, this was like interesting, interesting. one of those collections that i always go back to um and it's funny to me especially when i go back and i look at different everyone does these eliminations of prince best albums and how this era is always the first one that's pushed out. I'm like, do y'all really? understand the gems that are in the earlier set of his recordings? And that I don't know if it's a generational thing that people just don't get into the sound of it, but hmm. to me, it's just raw and uncut print. It's, it's a perfect album, and it's like 35 minutes, and it's yeah. like boom, 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 boom. That's it's all you need. Awesome. Yes. Don't give, me, don't give me two hours of junk and a snooze fest. Like <laughs> right. I want to be stimulated for the thirty minutes of yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, had probably. I always there's two. I always go back between Dirty Mind and 1999 as my favorite albums for different mm. reasons. But mm-hmm. you know, yeah, Dirty Mind is always one of those. It's an absolute classic. You know, it has to be in every top 10, damn near top five to me. Ah, like, no doubt. Um, one thing I had, the conversations expanded, but I just kind of thought it was interesting, the, sort of the top 10 R&B songs uh, of that year. Uh, okay. And if you can hear any of that and what we're talking about, obviously there are other influences on this record, but some of the top songs was uh, Special Lady by Ray Goodman and Gr- uh, Brown. Uh, one in a million, one in a million. Oh man, Ray Arm, no way. Larry Graham. Ray that Graham. came out when Dirty Mind came out. The That's same crazy. year, yeah. Dirty Mind came toward the end of the year, but yeah, uh, one in a wow. million. No, I think it was number one. Uh, one million. You by Earth, Wind, and Fire, which I sadly I can't, can't think of what that sounds like off the top. And of my shout head. out to Lewis Walsh. What does it sound like, Tanja? What? what song? What song by? You? Oh, song Lewis by you? Walsh. He did costuming for Earth, Wind, and Fire, and did some work for Prince too. Okay. Oh, cool! Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. But what does that song sound like? You, because you I, grew up on that. By Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, yeah. I can't I think, think of, of that one. Well, I, I might know it, when I hear I'm it. On a blank, we may have to. Yeah. yeah. All right. And well, um, another cool. one here that I know, I'm sure you guys will know, uh, Funkin' for Jamaica. Yeah. Tom Brown. That's good. Uh, That's this so is funny to think of these things in the context of like Prince's yeah. dirty mind. Right. Uh, here's another one. Y'all gonna My go man. Left. We gonna go right. <laughs> Let's get serious. Boom, boom. Hey. Let's get serious. hey, Jermaine was the man back then. I know y'all that album right now, there, but... Michael. That album by Jermaine. Hit yeah. after hit after hit after hit. Yeah, Jermaine was something else. Back Jermaine then. was the man. <laughs> Uh, this one, I think I hear some of its influence in Prince's stuff. Then, okay, uh, Shake Your Pants by Cameo. I don't know that. 
it shake your pants. Shake your pants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I like the, the guitar. That that, would be I think all those, but I also think things like, so for instance, I think When You Were Mine is like the perfect pop song. And I think it Absolutely. is in sort of an answer to Joe Jackson's Is She Really Going Out With Him? And mm. um, The Cars, My Best Friend's Girl. Like those three songs okay. yeah, together yeah, are yeah, like yeah. They fit together perfectly. They all are the same subject matter. And but I think he was really, yeah. Prince goes on to cover the cars later. In uh, in, in yeah. concert, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, another breakthrough hit hit in general to me, uh, The Breaks by Curtis Blow. Oh, yeah. That's nineteen eighty. Yep. Wow. And and then of course the Queen. Diana Ross, I'm coming out. Nice. Yeah, that was straight disco. Yeah. It was. So, I mean, you know, it's funny because you Diana hear that. That's why I was saying that, you know, he broke the barriers of what R&B was supposed to look like. The only thing like that it. was trying or not even trying, but was close to that, that you mentioned in this whole lineup was probably Cameo. And Cameo was right. straight funk, like mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. funk. They did have some of those moments, but that was straight, just phone. Yeah, and yeah. I would just, and, go ahead. Oh no, I'm sorry. But then, no, I was going to say to the younger, some of my younger viewers yeah. who may not be up on cameo, <laughs> do yourself a favor. You are going. Yes. You may have heard Candy and Word Up, possibly, but go listen to some of their earlier albums. That stuff is great. It's dope. And, there's more. And the ballads may get you ballads. in. Trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still playing them till today. Sparkle <laughs> and all that. Shit. Totally. As a matter of fact, I just bought it was like a, a UK release. I had never seen it before. It was at a record store. It was a double CD of Cameo. I picked it up. I mean, I was like, ah, oh, man. It just sounds so good the way they recorded this stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Warm. Just, um, yeah. Yeah. So. Good inside. So yeah. here's what I was thinking about what happened during this era, they went to Europe for the first time. Prince went to Europe for the first time. Mm. Um, Did he do it? Was it in France? Or went to remember. Amsterdam and Paris. Okay. London. Did they play in London? I think it was three places. There's, like, there's a classic uh, interview that was released that he yeah. did with somebody. Totally. When he was really messing with people. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think he was super influenced by the culture and like the sophistication of their music mm -hmm. scene and their fashion scene. Mm -hmm. And like that's I think when he like started wearing scarves. This is like transitioning into the controversy era. And mm -hmm. you know, Here we go. yeah, he's starting to like dress it up a little bit. I call this the, the refinement of the, the refine. Yes, totally. He's beginning yeah. to refine it now. First, it was raw, and it goes like with his hair, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened with his hair. He either got him a stylist, or he, or I don't know. Somebody realized, yeah, man, you know, our hair ain't like that. But if you straighten it, but if you put some <laughs> curls on it, and I, get with the sister or somebody to put your curl popping. I yeah, think what that happened was, was a major upgrade. That, that the hair, yeah. Was. Well, it's an upgrade to controversy from Dirty Mind because he like burned it. And I think that maybe that's when Jill Jones introduced him first to her uncle Earl and he started oh, yeah. to get it, you know, get it together. Yes, I do. I think so. I think you're absolutely right, Troy. And you know, then you notice the bangs are growing and getting long, and that's to me is like skate punk culture. Mm -hmm. Like the skate punks that I, you know, went to school with and stuff all had long bangs. Interesting. And that was like, you know, they're always flipping their long bangs. And I totally, that's the look. It's, it, yeah, I mean, the, the hair was such a big deal, particularly in the 80s and just like an, yeah. an African-American Man, oh, yeah, yeah. of course, we've had Little Richards, James Brown. They all had perms and things before. But I just think at this particular time for it to be a young artist and he's like at the very tip of sort of the cultural influence for him to, to, to sort of shift into this look, which, you know, plays in parallel. I have to bring him up sort of Michael Jackson 
shifting the look of what a male artist can look like. Uh, and they be, they, to me, that's like, they start to really get into, uh, to me, I just call it niggas was looking pretty and learn how to look <laughs> real pretty, but still kind of masculine. But it was definitely like, they don't look like normal dudes down the street. You know what I mean? I didn't know how they were looking like that. Now I know they have makeup and different things, but that's when they were, to me, was when I say it was refined. If you look at the older pictures of Prince there, you can tell the makeup game wasn't totally all the way in yet in the layering and stuff. But here, yeah, that's, like, that's what I mean. I think Europe played a little part in that. Probably, yeah. You know, in the new wave and romantic era, you know, those this, groups. This is like Prince realizing, and I'm a dude, I can say that, where he realized, I'm fine out here. Like, I, I look good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Look and with just a little that. refinement, I'll Great. look like the bad, I'll look better than the baddest. Oh, that I just heard something amazing. recently that is interesting. I heard that like he and Andre went to get their hair processed, like Jerry Curl. <laughs> and Prince hated it. Hilarious. This poster got me in trouble. And that's when Speak he like, burned his hair. That's when okay, he burned okay. his hair for Dirty Mind. Like he overprocessed uh, it or something. He left the perm in for too long. Yeah. yeah Kunk. Kunk it was like that was an answer to the Jerry Curl. He's like, nah. -uh. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. So, I don't know. Quick story about this poster. So this is yeah. I put this poster on my ceiling. <laughs> How old were you? First of all, we're not. The, hey, you're not supposed to ask a lady. No, I made this back in the day. She was a young lady. I was a young lady, almost a teen. I was a, a teenager. Queen. I can't. I was I'm, I'm thinking in the comments that if I was my daughter. As a young 13, 10 year old had yeah, this on, I would go ballistic. But go ahead and tell you. So then, yeah, so I had it over top of my. What I about if your 17 year old son had it on his wall? <laughs> but I had Come it on, over man. top of my head. Come on. Man. And my grandmother came and had a, she lost it. But when I tried to explain to her why I had it on my ceiling, because my explanation was when I woke up, I wanted to see him in the morning. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And how did that work? It didn't work. Yeah, I didn't. She made you take it down? She, yeah, it wasn't even her house and she made me take it down. That's right. Hey, that's, I've told the story many times, but my grandmother did the exact same thing to my cousin. We didn't live there. We was visiting, but she had that up. My grandma said, <laughs> oh, mine didn't get torn, but it came. It came oh, down. Tanja, I wish our buddy Peter was here because he's got a really good story about this poster and his family. Wow. Yeah, this. I think this poster was that point of well, for my family, we grew up strict, devout Catholics, right? And my grandmother was the one who I told your story about. You know, gave me the money for my first forty-five. Mm. So it was a fine line of, yes, we are letting you <laughs> and allowing you to enjoy what he's giving to you. But this with the cross <laughs> on there, that's too, that's for most that's black for. families. That, that, mm -mm. This was a little too you much. Play around ad, with that. You remember the ad for controversy with the school girl and the See, was that a real I, was that a I real ad from that. back then? Or is that I? I, for, I never saw it back then. That's why. I oh, asked. oh, oh, the ad. Yeah, yeah. it was a real ad. It was. Real oh, ad. Interesting. Okay. That was a yeah, ad. that like Japanese horror movie yes. girl with yes. the yes. yeah. Interesting. That's a trippy oh, yeah. ad. That was a trip. I loved it, but that was true. but that was my life. I was a Catholic school girl, you know, in school, mm. but loving Prince, you know. Right. <laughs> right. And then this, my this grandfather is... was like, "This is it." Yeah. I drew the line. And okay, Prince so here, man, alone. this is him really playing into like, okay, the Whoa. last album, I know I became, I'm I'm the taboo guy. I'm the guy yeah. that's going to do the crazy stuff. And this was like, stepped over the line. Like I said, when you put the cross up there and you half naked in the shower, you know, that went, as far as I know, I don't know of any other music artists who did something like this, not to say it happened, but in our generation that was unheard of and again as a grown man he looked 
I, I can see why this was on was on him. Like all I could do was hate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Bootsy say I hypnotized by hate because he got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I can't come. We, I can't compare with that. You know, average cats ain't gonna be able to pull that off. But right. He killed that, and that's. I would love average to hear how he thought. He like was. you know what? Yeah. I want this poster in the album. I know. Like that's who did he talk that. into that? Yeah. You know who? I want to really know how those how those executives felt when he presented what he presented. I would love to be a fly on the wall to hear yeah. the argument of why oh. I would have a cross with a waist chain, with bikinis, <laughs> in a shower, wet. With physics. water dripping off my... Right! He, under he understood, <laughs> man. He understood. <laughs> this was IG model... Way before this is fans only. Yeah, yeah, only fans. This was only fans. <laughs> yeah, only fans. <laughs> he, tap, he tapped into that early. Like totally. and that's, that was like okay, Prince's wow, sex symbol. Yeah. Like, and that's when I I I, I remember like I said I, I was young, but I remember my cousin had that. I didn't understand sex and all of that at that point, but because I was looking at that, just, why this is a naked man. He looks like, <laughs> but then I was like, but wow, he looks like a it's like a woman, like he, you know what I mean? I didn't understand it. I had never seen that sort of sexuality before. Right. And I was just like, wow. Okay. For me, it was like happening. Like I discovered the kind of, you know, like, like you said, I went back in time, Purple Rain. Mm -hmm. I knew about 1999 from MTV and I was like, who is this dude? But Purple Rain is what like cemented it. And then I went back in okay. Purple Rain, or I mean, 1999, Controversy, Dirty Mind. And it was like, at the moment I was like, hitting peak puberty so mm. the sex everything about those sexual you know innuendos and not so innuendos was like speaking to me and you know his weirdness and his his bravery to like be him that mm. was like mm. hitting me at the perfect time in my you know development and it just stuck with me and yeah he was probably more of a big brother to me than my big brothers were you know yeah, yeah. and you got to think this was during the reagan era right oh yeah, yeah. yeah. ronnie talking to rush and, yeah. and we, we were gonna do something but i don't think can we'll, we do it well yeah we can do you want to do the switcheroo we're gonna do a little wardrobe change i'll be right back <laughs> and we're back <laughs> all right wow <laughs> all, right, all right sir okay where we're love we? it i love That's it crazy. so you got the whole thing i mean what do you guys think prince was saying with wearing the i guess the tuxedo i don't thing know if it was a reaction to someone the, Someone's like, I gotta be formal, but I'm gonna put. I'm still gonna put. I got the trench coat. It's still on. It's purple this time. It's yeah, changing. I thought maybe it was like in a in reaction to maybe his label being like, dude, come on, you put some put some clothes on. So he's like, okay, how's this? Hmm. Then pan awesome. down. He's still wearing the bikini briefs and the leg warmers. Right. Yeah. So. Yep. It was his first four. It was the refinement, as you as you as you mentioned. He's getting yeah, I mean, there. He's even getting the, the the covers, uh, I guess, airbrushed like his face. Right? Oh yeah. So Michael, go <laughs> test second picture again, because now this reminds me of the look that he gave. I'm trying to remember what tour that was. That's a controversy, no? No, no. I'm. It almost reminds me of something like certain parts of parade too yes yes um, think about it this is somewhat the parade yeah. look yeah 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 the kind of uh traditional fancy mm -hmm. black and white yes tuxedo which is a thing in his mind yeah. like, it's coming from something you know what i'm saying it's, we're like yeah you have to wear your like you said traditional formal type of thing you can still be funky and all that but i don't know if that's an older generation thing where that look is from something that he saw as a kid or something um, right, but he I wonder. You know, the, real quick, just to say, he also has. You can see the uh, 
cultural differences of early Prince in his performances because he has that, I don't know what you call it, just like those old shows where they, hey, da 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 and if I, that's all <laughs> like, I can like think of, but in, the broad vaudeville, he, he has that in fair. his shows, like when Vegas. Oh yeah, he's always do that right. kind of stuff. It's to me, it was like he's always had that in his shows to the point, like, like Cab Calloway, like old school band. Yeah, even yeah. in Purple Rain, the movie, the the grand yeah. finale ness like, of his yeah. thing. Yeah, that's always been a part of his thing but that's from a different generation yeah so where like they don't the necessarily do that, man. that there you go that's it yep. yeah the band the leader, director right? the leader mm-hmm. yeah and cool. a band the yeah. band yeah. thing is important to him has always been and now right. he's the ultimate band leader but yeah. i'm the i'm the i'm the now generation band leader so it's a little more twisted <laughs> you know i don't have no pants on <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm still representing that. But now I'm like, this is our generation. Our clothes are here. We don't, we don't care. care. You know what I'm saying? But we still being there. there. Yeah. And then you have to also yeah. think of it was the Reagan area. It was that time mm. of opulence and just excessiveness and overspending and wearing. You know, it was kind of mm. like the introduction of, you know, luxury clothes and things yeah. of that sort. And I think, you know, which, more, which Morris is sort of the representation, the, right. the, right. the more traditional, in so to speak, mm-hmm. in that regards, as far as you know, the dressing up, the zoot suits, mm. yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I also, I do, I still think the European thing has to do with that refinement, too. I think a lot of the bands were kind of doing that, oh, kind of love this photo, new wave cowboyish sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Around that time too, I love mm-hmm. that photo too. Look at that. man, so no. young. I know, so young and so. Well, see, like the scarf. Now he's starting to get into the scarf, and mm-hmm. I know, like as a, a teenager growing up in SeaTac, that you couldn't find ruffle shirts anywhere. So <laughs> the scarf was what I used to like make it seriously. So I'm wondering if that, you know, that's part of his. He's moving towards this new romantic. Uh, Edwardian, mm-hmm. like over the top, right? He's heading towards that slowly but surely. And I think the scarves, and he's starting to wear scarves a lot more during the 1981, yeah, uh, going into 82. And then they start getting to be like the ruffly. And it, and you know, the interesting thing or the cool thing about Prince with all of this, all of this, the looks matter. Like it's oh, not yeah. like yeah, it's just a, some style, it's like, no. This is the absolute style, and it's got to be on something that most people are not doing. And particularly, like, if you listen to his music, like you said before, it sort of redefines what R&B is. Now we can have the new wave influences with synthesizers and all that. But it's still, like, standing on the funk that came before it, but it's like, I'm going to do it in a whole different way. Like, So they can't, they can't do it. Like, yeah, okay, Parliament and Funkadelic is banging in the streets. That's that's what the parties is pumping. Cool. I'm going to do that style, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take some with this new wave and, and something that brothers ain't even playing. They ain't even looking like this. So we'll be so different and cool. And we're going to kill them. Yep. And, and at the same time, understanding like, okay, I know I got to feed the streets. I know it's pop. Let's get Morris. Y'all going to be like the, the gangsters, pimp player type cats. And that style is important. Like, I understand that style, but that ain't my, like, I'm, but Prince ain't going to come out like that. Right. Right. But, but he says he knows enough to like, yeah, the look is just as important as this music, the presentation. Uh, it's it, awesome. And to it has the symbolism. Yeah. Right. And then just to watch, just during these si- different eras on how the fabrication started changing. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the details started changing. Mm-hmm. And then they really stayed somewhat in this little pocket of the trench and, you know, the trench changing and then the trench elevated. Yeah. Once we got to Purple Rain. So yeah. what happened with now? At what point did he transition to that black trench that he wore live on Controversy? 
don't really that's remember right. seeing any that's footage right. of him wearing the purple one live. And that's also the when he first starts wearing pants. Mm. 1999, or I mean, the controversy tour, right? Take with leaving off the, the, the bikini brief. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right. I'll put some pants I guess on. where could you go from that? Like, mom's gonna be in the audience. I guess I'll wear pants on this one. Right, right. And I'm not gonna show anything past this, but just okay. to say, like, okay, such a refined. It, it's the same style, actually. Right, but, but it's exact. It's so refined. Like, okay, I got money. I got other people. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like, man, he made it to a degree. Like, yeah, that that sort of shiny purple. It still has the uh, what do you call that? The little grill thing there. It's the, the spikes. It, what it originally was was a a rifle butt, like protector. Really? This is a military garment to begin with. So interesting. And that, that was, yeah. yeah. And I think that came from a lot of, you know, thrift shoppings was done at surplus stores and surplus yeah, and stores. spikes on your shit. And yeah. Yeah. They sold all the military uh, like uniforms and oh, yeah. know, things of that sort. And that's I think where where Andre said they got them was the, the surplus. Like, the store. surplus. Mm. So I, I'm curious, and I didn't do my proper research, but I really want to know when exactly Lewis Walsh jumped into the picture with their um, their clothing. Are you talking like Louis and Vaughn? Lewis and Vaughn? Yes. Bon? yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think I think it's. I think it's the 1999 era. I think. Okay. It's era. So that's what we're we're getting ready to get into. Because right. he starts wearing this the bolero jacket suits mm -hmm. and the buttons <laughs> and buttons. the shirts started to get a little more fancy, but they're still just tuxedo shirts that you can get anywhere. Right. They're not custom wow. yet, right? But yeah, so he's yeah, it's it's like amping up. It's all build up to yeah. I can't wait till we jump into 1999 because that's when it really Game changer, game yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What what is um between controversy and dirty mind? Is do you guys have any preferences in terms of the look one or the other? Is, is there a difference enough? Um, I kind of think they. I'm, I'm glad that we did these two together because to me they go hand in hand. They do. Kind um, of. They're kind of the same era. I mean, even if you think about the video that he did for Uptown and Dirty Mind, they, it was one whole continuous shot. Yeah. Hmm. Concert shot. And we didn't really get too much variance of a look or style in those two albums. Um, it kind of just stayed consistent. And then I, kinda, I think the, I think the controversy look is a little more like up like upscale or whatever with the the tie and stuff. So I like I like that because it's like party in the front, liquor in the rear with the you know it's like the top is all business and but he's still got you know he's partying on the bottom with his you know mm -hmm. so that I think is probably I, I love the the duality of that. So that's I'm into I'm into the controversy era. I think a little more as far as the look. Like I would I wouldn't, but I would be more likely to like dress up in that cover that look to go to like a costume party or something than I ever would mm -hmm. in like the dirty mind with like no shirt. And, stuff. But and how old was I Prince? think about wearing these things? So well, how 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 old was he during these times? He like was what nineteen eighty? He was like twenty two. Yep, he was in his early. He was a little kid. Wow. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, you know, he wasn't a little kid. He was a grown man. But that's just so young to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 22 imagine you being 22 and having knowing you have this sort of influence and like and then just like being so fearless like even just, just having that vision of this is what i want and this is <laughs> what i'm going to get and right I'm gonna go do that at 22 like no <laughs> no way so you just have to know that he he planned it all out. Like it's crazy to like watch <laughs> to look back on it. I know. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we're doing this because you know, I've always looked at it, I've always paid attention to it, but now just really sitting with it, yeah, it's completely different. 
This is and very cool. I, I feel like this is sort of like a, there you go. Yep. See, he's, yeah. This this book, I mean, really just has a lot of the look from you know, these early times that's uh, yeah. very interesting. And I, and I pulled out the wrong book yeah, to, look to for reference and I'm not going to say what book it was, but it didn't give any detail of anything. That's the book I should have been that looking is, That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's the book. To that's, 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 that's my guy. Alan Bolio is kind of my He's my photographer, the most, the biggest influence, you know, wow. that, where he goes after this mm. is the iconic, to me, the iconic prints. Wow. And, and the coat stayed relevant. Yep. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it just boggles my mind that he had the wherewithal to think like, I'm going to work with these photographer and, and take yeah. these pictures. There's a lot of pictures in here that yeah. I had never seen before mm -hmm. yeah. from these periods. And I'm like, wow, he had a, a, some other looks that we yeah. never yeah, got right? to see, right? Oh, like, my God. There's some like, beautiful like, looks in that yeah. book. But there's like some from the Dirty Mind area where he's wearing like a headband. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you really like, saw he was playful. What's yeah, that? As you could see that he was playful and kind of, you know, having fun. Yes. Well, you would think yeah. he was mm -hmm. so serious from the pictures that you saw. Right. Yeah. But then you got to start thinking. Then it started having teamwork. Like you had a whole wardrobe team. You had a yeah. whole makeup team. Everything started becoming more refined. Yeah. And less of, you know, it's my friend who's. <laughs> totally. Uh, it's like, sorry, Sylvia, but. Yeah, too much work to just have you do this anymore. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's like going from that's 1999 era, right? That has to be like 82. This is yeah. This is a dirty mind. That's a dirty mine era picture, right? Oh, no. yeah. That's from where it's in the book. Uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Real quick, just to show another sort of view of that. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. An alternate alternate shot. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's my. I know. It's like cold. <laughs> I wonder how that shoot went. Like, who else was there? <laughs> Alan, <laughs> Prince. Alan's probably like, what is he thinking? You know, <laughs> I was like, really? And okay. it's okay. He is in rare form. And meeting Alan and thinking like, I never got to. I never got to ask him about that. I know um, we briefly met at yeah. the talk that you did for. Um, yeah, because he was signing books. You're or, right. No, I was doing a moderation for a PRN alumni. Yes. And Alan was there signing books. Like, mm -hmm. So I got to get my book signed. Which is Maybe awesome. we'll have to get him. We yeah. Get him on here so we for this next one, for sure. That'd be awesome. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Hello. I know. Where are you? We we need you because we need some questions answered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'll wrap things up here, but uh, suffice to say, this period of prints, fascinating. And again, it really like lays the groundwork for everything that sort of comes after it. Like mm -hmm. if, if you took this out, it'd be a different print. Like, you know what I mean? Like a lot of the stuff that he becomes known for, which I, I also think he sort of sheds late, way later, but it all starting right here this was the turning point to be like okay i'm gonna push image heavy i'm gonna push mm -hmm. ban this like you said it was a whole other world like the sin the prince cinematic universe started at dirty mind and the iconicness the storytelling uh learning more about him sort of starts here the albums have a different turn to them they're not just songs Mm -hmm. Now they're like, okay, I'm planting a flag here, as, as Kinesa would say. Like, this is boom. This to me, this was like the, the new power generator in a sense of where I'm starting this new culture. Uptown. Uptown. Yeah, this is where Uptown. it starts. Yeah. It's where I want to be. Yep. Uh, uh, Uptown is like the first incarnation of his mm -hmm. world, right? Yeah. And just build, builds, builds on that. Um, any last things? You guys want to throw out there before we uh, wrap it up? Probably, but they're now they're. 
<laughs> there's just so it's just so it, it's it's a lot it's a lot but i'm i'm thankful that we're you know we're taking the time to really just you know have these conversations and you know i want to tell people that give this era some love that's all we have for. give us some stuff give us some love if you haven't listened to it go listen to it because how i don't understand how you can totally appreciate everything past Purple Rain and not appreciate this golden era. Like, mm -hmm. this is what made him who he is. Yeah. yeah. Book wise, sound wise, image wise, mm -hmm. just everything. This is his foundation. And for me, how can you appropriately talk yourself into thinking that you're the specialist about print? <laughs> <laughs> don't know nothing about this era. I have a problem with that. I do too, if that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I totally agree with you. It's like, this plants the seed. And he never spent this much time cultivating a sound and a look ever again. It started from 1980 mm. and it maxed out at 85. That's four or five years that he like worked this look until it was... Mm -hmm not workable anymore right and but then after that he changed every every album he i would say he, he's he, he's he changed it when that look became the dominant look and that's all you thought of period uh, like ready for the worlds the baby face you know the deal right all these groups sort of now have that look and yeah but that's not interesting like it took left, that long right yeah it took that long and started to seep in where it at first it looked like Whoa, what the hell is this? To the point, oh, I gotta have that. Yeah. I gotta have, to the that point, I, I gotta have my hair. I gotta have the prince, the prince look. Yeah. Right. The, the right. Prince look, yeah. The foundation of it all. And everybody wanted to be him, but nobody couldn't be. <laughs> were, were you even seeing the his contemporaries start to look and sound like it? You know, I remember I always remember that one video of Rick James where you had the whole yeah. fluffy thing. <laughs> Oh, and that's what it was as somebody said in the comments. I'm glad you brought up Rick James. I was right. Thank you for backing me up, Michael, because they were saying that they didn't see a correlation in oh. how Prince influenced Rick James. He did. Thank he did. you. Period. It all comes around. <laughs> that's it what I was going to mention when you were talking about him standing on the foundation of funk and, you know, I was like visualizing he's walking on this foundation funk and pick it up these other things and adding mm -hmm. it to his, you know, his pack of powers mm -hmm. and just coagulating that into something that's in, in totally his own. And that's, that's what is the most fascinating about Prince is that he's yeah. able to sort of uh, evoke other eras or other m musics or times but it's mm -hmm. always just prince it's prince music you know yeah it was a gumbo cool. it was a gumbo yeah yes yeah, absolutely and that's the great thing about prince is that <laughs> one of the you can see, when, well, i'm just saying in terms of like he was such a fan of yes. music a student i should say of music yeah. that and he was and he was also uh, he wanted to soak it all in and do it better. Yes. You know, that 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 I want to do a better part is sometimes lost. I don't say it's lost. Some artists don't have that aspect of it. It's really like, hey, I want to homage something. But Prince had that. But I'm going to do it better than that. Yeah. Kind of not asshole in this, but just cocky ass like now nah, I'm going to be the best. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Which I think we don't see that. There's not a lot that you see that today. There's a lot of people who can mimic and yes. has studied the greats and can play just like it, but they don't have that sort of, yeah. They but can't gonna, take it to the next level. Yeah, I'm going to turn mm -hmm. them out. With, right. Know, and I want them to come on stage or I want them to come on stage. <laughs> yeah. So, right. You know what I'm saying? And that was Chris. Yeah. And that's I, I told you he couldn't play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> That might be with a thing that's when they say it's not another prince, because I don't know if there's another a person who would have that attitude. About right. It, like, and be like, no. You know what it I mean? was, yeah, absolutely. Totally. I can sit here and name some people that I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, well, they, they kind of sound like a prince. Yeah. OK, I can see what you're saying. 
But there's but, a difference that they're not like they're not trying to kill yeah. other music. Even to like, I know I'm just going around, but even like with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that was that attitude. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm up here with the grace and I'm giving all my, but I'm actually gonna come up here and kill these motherfuckers. Like, yeah, I'm gonna let them know I'm not nobody to play. I'm better than y'all. At least I'm gonna play like I'm better than you. And that's the thing about Prince. Like he was on some. I'm about to wipe the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Which you saw when he had Miles Davis on stage, you know, low key, like, yeah, okay, well, now watch this. You know, <laughs> see if he can keep up with it. You know, he's that type of dude, man. So, yeah. We don't have anybody. No. Not with that. But attitude, we're so you know? lucky we had him. Absolutely. We are so lucky Absolutely. we got to like share the earth with that dude for a while. Yeah. Yeah. We got to experience that. I had a conversation with a. Uh, Someone I met that was younger and knew nothing about Prince. Mm. And I have to remember that, you know, there are generations that if we don't have these type of conversations or we don't, you know, celebrate him. Right. It can be forgotten. It, it, can, be, it, can, it can be forgotten. It can be forgotten. Mm -hmm. Man, that yeah, would be it certainly can. tragedy. Yeah. So we got to keep we got to keep it up. Let's keep doing this because this is really fun. Because also, it's like educational for me too. Really, mm -hmm. so I vice love versa. It. So vice fun. Versa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can please go check out Troy. Troy, where can they find you online? Probably easiest is on Instagram, at Troy Gua, T R O Y G U A. Right. That's that's my first go to. Gotcha, gotcha. It's Tanja. And mine is IG2 is T's Graham, T E E S Graham. Love it. And you can find me at Podcast Juice. And of course, you can find us right here on YouTube, on Patreon, and Apple Podcasts, and all the other places. <laughs> but with that said, work it like a job. We'll see you next time. Peace. Next time. <laughs> <laughs>